people find pleasure in mowing the lawn. I am not one of those people. I would rather have the perfect lawn while sitting drinking tea and letting technology do the work. Which is why today I'm going to introduce you to the Husqvarna Auto Mower 105. You'd be forgiven for dismissing robot mowers as a bit of an unnecessary luxury. But in actuality, if you have a larger lawn that you want to stay on top of, it can actually be really, really advantageous. Particularly if you are perhaps short of time, perhaps not physically capable, or simply don't want to do it. Um, the physical capability of one is quite important because if you think about it, once you've got a larger garden, you can't rely on a plug-in mower. You need either a petrol mower or a battery-powered mower, and they tend to be heavy. So in which case, it can be quite testing. So having one of these solves that problem. Now this particular one, the Husqvarna Auto Mower 105, is Husqvarna's entry-level model. Now they do an array of auto mowers, and some of them are really complex and very smart, and they look like little tanks, to be fair. Here's some images of some. Now what these can do is they use GPS technology and are very good at learning the environment in which they work. This one is incredibly uncomplicated. How it works is you create a circuit ring and then it simply moves around randomly within that ring until it meets, reaches an edge and then it turns in a different random direction and sets off again until it meets the next edge and it keeps doing that in a zigzag pattern until it's mowed your entire lawn. Now the way you do that is you start with an installation kit. Now inside the kit, you have your power cable, you have your all important measuring stick, which I'll talk about in a moment, and you have lots and lots of pegs. Now what the pegs are for, are to pin down your circuit wire. Now the circuit wire is simply a thin piece of cable with a small piece of copper in the middle. Now. In terms of creating the ring, you can either go around and lay the ring down on the lawn and then pin it down with these pegs, like so, or you can actually just get a spade and maybe make just a little incision in your grass and about two centimetres down and just push it down. It takes a little while and installers, the retailers, will actually come and do that for you for a charge, but to be fair, I did it and it took me a couple of hours to be able to lay it in the garden. Once you've got that outer ring, the lawnmower said will stay within that ring and just keep going until it runs out of battery. Now what it uses then is you also have connected to the base, and the base is the bit that the lawnmower sat on here. The base has something called a guide wire. So in the square of the garden in this case, right at the opposite end, you'll connect a second wire that then leads straight back to the base, and that's the guide wire. So what the mower then does is it runs until it's running low on battery or its timer is run out, and I'll explain that shortly, and then it will find the guide wire and then follow it right back to its base, reverse round and then back in, ready to be able to charge to start all over again. While the mower's out doing its job, I'll take the opportunity to show you around the base. So this comes with the mower and is the one part of the kit that doesn't move. It has a fixed location where the mower can back in and out without any obstruction. And it can mow quite close to it, as you can see from the tufts of grass alongside, which I'll explain in a little while. Um, so this serves no purpose other than said just to provide charge to it. So plastic unit, you've got these little kind of grippy bits here that allows the wheels of the mower to be able to back on in any kind of weather conditions, because of course this is outside all the time and will get rained on might even get some visits from birds uh, and round the back you have simple connections you have the left the right from the circuit the guide wire down the middle and the power connection the important bits are here and these are the charging points which I'll show you when I show you the mower in detail and crucially you need to make sure you have a green light visible at the back because that means that the circuit is complete and the mower will work properly within the boundary that you've set. The other end of the base unit's power cable looks like this. So what I've done is I've fed it through a gap in the patio and then it comes through to this transformer here and then that tra transformer is then plugged into an outdoor socket, which you can just about see under there. So when you are setting this up, you will need to bear in mind that you do need to be able to get power to the unit from a regular 240 volt plug socket. 
Now let me give you a quick physical tour of the unit itself. Now the whole thing's made of plastic and basically has a central bit and then this exterior bit which has springs on it. And what that allows it to do is sense if it's hit anything, which will then cause it to stop, change direction and move away from the item that it's hit, whatever the obstruction is. Um, coming around the side, you've got the two big driving wheels. So you've got one on either side and these have got good grip and they'll pick up any kind of say bird poo that you happen to, uh, it happens to drive through. <laughs> nice and then round the back here you've just got this wheel that just follows so this isn't a driving wheel it's just a small wheel that follows the two driving wheels at the front and you also have the main power switch under there to be able to flick the whole unit off and um, going underneath you have single wheel I just mentioned and then you've got the cutting area. Now you can just about see this blade peek, peeking out from the side here. If you spin this top unit, you can't see the blades apart from that, said that little stray. <laughs> but the underside unit, when you spin that, that's when the blades come out. And the blades are basically sharpened piece of metal. They're not like Stanley knife sharp, but they are sharp enough to cut blades of grass when they're spinning at speed without any trouble. Now, once you've set the height, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, as this thing goes along, it will cut basically about one or two millimeters off uh, the grass every time it goes over it because it's running so frequently, which means there's no need to ever pick anything up because it's basically dropping these little bits, which then get mulched into the garden and actually feed the lawn itself, reducing the likelihood of moss, which is great. Around the back here, these are your charging connections. So on the base unit, if you remember, you just saw those little metal bits on either side. When this thing backs up, it just rubs against that and creates the circuit. And you've got one on each side and that's your positive, your negative and your charging. Now back on the top of the unit, you'll see it has a large orange button labeled stop. And sure enough, when the mower is moving, when you push that, it will stop the unit. But it also opens up this control panel. Now inside, you've got two modifiers, if you will. This is the knob for adjusting the height that it cuts. If you see on the bar there, it's going up and down. It just physically moves the blade underneath. So we keep it about three centimeters there. And then you have the screen and the control panel. Now you have to enter a pin, otherwise it will set an alarm off after a short period. Or if you get the pin wrong, it sets the alarm off. Or if you pick the unit up without pressing stop, and opening this and keying in the pin code, it will set the alarm off. So it's sort of secure, but perhaps not super, super secure. If somebody was uh, to throw it in the back of a car very quick there, I wouldn't imagine that alarm would really count for much. Um, in terms of the pin code, let me just enter mine. And click OK. Once you're in, you have here. So what you can see is it's the 7th of June. It's 9.30 in the evening. Uh, this mower has been running for 478 hours since we got it. So it gives you an idea about what it's capable of. Uh, and then you've got the menu button, the home button, the start button, and of course the numeric pad. And these buttons change purpose based on what you're doing. So if I click menu, you've got four options. First one is the timer, which is this one here. I'll click across. Next one is installation, which I'm not going to show you because it is just about setting it up uh, of the units, so which is not super interesting. Um, security is about changing your pin and also um, changing how sensitive the uh, unit is. And then the last one there is the settings. So if we quickly look at settings, settings allows you to put it into eco mode or standard mode, which is to do with power consumption, not surprisingly. Uh, time and date, so you need to tell it because obviously if it's running a timer, it needs to know what time it is right now. And you can choose the language and the country and... Uh, so there are other elements in there as you scroll down. I think you go in there. Reset. Yeah, you go. You've, got to, you've got to use a setting option uh, to reset as well. So back out. The one that matters most is timer. If we click on time, you've got work hours one, two, uh, and then work days, and then reset. So work hours one is when you specify the hours that you want the unit to work. So we have that set at 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, because based on the size of our lawn, which is this, um, Husqvarna's guide is that this thing will take about eight hours to be able to cut this um, every day and maintain a height. Now, it's worth noting it doesn't run continuously for eight hours. The battery just isn't that good. What it does is it runs for about an hour and then it will find the guide wire, bring itself back to the charger, as you saw before, fully charge itself and then just set off and keep doing that um, from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. And we've got it set up to do that as well for, I scroll down to work days, every single day of the week. So it runs for all of them. Your second option there with the uh, with the work hours too is if you wanted to split it, then maybe it did four hours during the day and four hours during the night, then you can set a second set of work hours, which we don't use. We just run it during the day. And then when you are ready to run it, you just click the home button and your options are home, which if you put it into home mode and then press uh, OK, it will work. If it's not already on the base, it will just make its way back to the base. 
If you put it on auto, it'll run the timer that you just saw. If you put it on man, it will run manual. But basically, it will run until it runs out of battery. It won't even come back on the guideway. It will just stop dead. So not many reasons for using that, unless you're shooting a video. I've used it a couple of times. But anyway, we'll just put it back to auto, press start, and it'll tell me, next start, Wednesday, 10 o'clock. And now I'll close this, and it will just sit there until then. I mentioned earlier, as part of the installation kit, you received this little ruler. It's just a piece of cardboard, and you do get a metric version as well. Um, it's just I've damaged that one, so I just have this one left with Imperial, so it's in inches. Um, and what you use it for is it tells you where to lay the guide wire based on the terrain. So in this case, the path here is next to the grass, which means they're the same level. So there's no risk of the mower running aground or hitting anything. So in this case, you would use the shorter setting, which is two inches or five centimeters, and you would lay the wire here, which is why the grass is cut right up to the edge. However, when you come around this corner here, this has this sleeper, so it's a very solid thing. So in this circumstance, you wouldn't use the short one, you'd use the long one. So which is why the wire is now over here. The reason why you have a little bit of cutting beyond it is the mower will always go about two centimeters beyond where you lay the wire, which is why it's important to make sure you do use that longer distance because it ensures that the mower doesn't end up hitting obje objects like that every single time it comes to the edge. You want it to stop just before, like it does on this video here. thus ensuring the unit never gets damaged. The only downside of it is that, as you can see, the grass, therefore, doesn't end up getting quite so short right round the edges, which means about once a week you have to go around with a strimmer, which, to be fair, is not such a big deal. It's a relatively small price to pay to have a perfect lawn the rest of the time. When working around fixed obstacles, such as trees, when you lay the wire, you make a point of bringing it out, such as on this diagram, to allow space for it to go around the tree. Bear in mind, some trees will, of course, still be growing, so don't put the wire too close and make sure you do indeed allow space for it to get round. Now, inevitably, if you have a family garden, there will be obstacles. Now, it can deal with things that can roll, so it'll just push the ball out of the way. But when it hits something that it can't get past, the sensor sees that, and then we'll change the direction of the unit and set off in a completely different direction so as not to damage the unit or the item left on the lawn. So I guess the last two questions have got to be, are there any downsides and would I recommend the auto mower? So let's start with the downsides. Um, the fact that it can't mow right to the edges is not a big deal. So going around with a strimmer once a week is, is not exactly hard work. But the security element is still the bit that makes me a little bit nervous. I wouldn't imagine I would be comfortable using this in a front garden. So I think it's just too liftable at the end of the day. So a back garden only for me, that would be my view. Um, the second thing I have to admit is we've had the unit for three years, as I said, which you can see from the various marks on it. Um, we did actually have to make a warranty claim where it had been away for the winter because generally it will only run from September through, sorry, from March through September, which is kind of grass growing season. Um, and for some reason, during the time that it was in the garage during winter, it developed some sort of fault that meant it had to go back to the dealers and they had to replace some sort of, uh, I think, one of the circuit boards in it. Now, it was under warranty, so it wasn't the end of the world, but at the same time, I'm still none the wiser as to what caused it because I've followed all the storage instructions. But for the fact that I don't have to mow the lawn for those six months of the year and it always looks perfect, I would recommend this all day long. Um, yes, you're never going to have those beautiful straight lines that you're going to have with a lawnmower if you put the time and effort in. This thing will leave zigzags all over the place. But because it's maintaining a relatively short length, you're never really going to see them. You just have a short lawn. Great for the kids to play on, great for the dog to run around on, great to be able to find little dog deposits um, in amongst the grass. And I think it's just brilliant. I've got to admit, it's, I, I love the time it saves. Um, I could be sat here right now with my lawn getting mowed how cool is that anyway that is uh, the end of the review hopefully that's useful if you have any questions then just you know put them in the chat below and if you haven't subscribed then please click that button your support's really really important and uh, and it's fantastic to see the channel growing and allowing me to do more videos like this one so thanks for watching particularly if you got to this point and hopefully i'll see you at the next video take care bye